So for those who know me, I'm a concert music composer. I write for orchestras, I write for real people all the time. So when Spitfire Audio bring out a new product like Albion One Orchestra, I'm very skeptical, but it turned out that I needed a new sample orchestra, so I bought it and I've been using it on a production. This is a cue for a TV series directed by uh, Philip Grenier, uh, which hired me for this job. It's a fantasy genre TV series, so I needed an orchestra and other samples that could support it. And I'll be the one who was selling this idea. It's actually the orchestra, and then there's other samples, there's percussion samples, there's like electronic samples for sound design. And I've been actually using all of those for this production. So what best way to showcase what is Albion One? Well, let's have a listen first. So there you have it, it's the ending part of the of the trailer. It's the most epic moment where all the orchestra comes in. And pretty much all the sound here are from Albin 1. I just got two of these, the piano and the choir were not from this. But otherwise, the strings here, the brasses here, the woodwind here, and the percussions up here are all from Albion 1. Even the, the small pad at the end is from also Albion 1. So I have tons of pads, but I thought this one sounded good, so I used it. So just a broad presentation first of the, the software. When you open it, you have the Spitfire here. Uh, you have divided in different sections. This is the orchestra, that's the core of the product. You have some loops and uh, the percussions I'm using are from here. Uh, this is like, again, some, some electronic sounds for sound design. And the Albion Legacy, I'm not sure what it is. It's actually older sounds. Um, I've used some of them uh, in other productions, but yeah, I mostly used the orchestra here. So what you have are the brasses, the strings, the wood, the woodwinds. And you notice, instead of being divided by instrument, they were divided by high or low, light or mid or low. And when I did some research about this, it, actually I realized, well, you got just one instrument for all the strings. So it's the violins, viola, cello and double basses all together, they actually all blended together in one patch, which was kind of scary for me at first because I love going to like a solo instrument to the, the whole ensemble. But for the specific cue, I really needed like the, the whole orchestra. So I just got these, I just got these uh, divided into three layers actually. You got some low strings uh, that are doing some a little bit more rhythmic stuff. You got the medium strings uh, doing a, a ostinato in here and then the high strings who are doing a melody. So let's listen to the low strings first. And actually, there are low strings and brasses. So yeah, for this one, I was checking actually if I used the modulation wheel, but actually no, I just used the different velocity of uh, uh, while playing the chords on, on, the, on the piano. And this is what I got. Now let's listen to the medium strings. So I really love these. There's more of the ostinato part of, uh, of the music here. Um, they're just basically octaves going up and down, doing uh, doing arpeggios. Da -da 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 -da. And notice they have this kind of six eight figure rhythmic figure uh, tied to them, uh, as opposed to the rest of the the music, which is more in three four. So we got kind of a, a like a rhythmic counterpoint here. And for this one, I used the basic string uh, instrument, uh, and I used the spiccato here. Uh, but you got tons of other things. You got spiccato, staccato, pizzicato, uh, collegno. Uh, long notes, console, consoldini, uh, tremolo, etc. And they all sound pretty good. You have to control these uh, with the modulation wheel, especially the longer notes. Uh, for these small attacks here, I, I mostly actually didn't have any modulation wheel. I just played with the velocity to make it more or less dynamic. But this is where it gets interesting, the high strings melody.
As I showed you here, uh, you see there's quite a lot of uh, uh, modulation wheel action going up. Um, and for the longer notes, I usually use it uh, on the attacks, uh, so we can feel the bow changing. So that's the whole string part, it's actually sound amazing by itself. And let's see what I did with the woodwinds first. So the woodwinds just double basically the melody for the, for the strings. So you see I did different combinations to just show you how impactful uh, just adding a doubling to the woodwinds can be on an on a octave melody like this on the strings. It's actually something I do with a real orchestra, so this is basically the time where I realized, okay, well, this is a good uh, sound, sound factory library. So for the woodwinds, it is the same as the strings. It's all the woods uh, playing together. And as they go up, uh, some instruments do drop down when they, they can play as I, but there's kind of a balance in the volume which just makes it more realistic. It's kind of an all-in-one uh, arrangement uh, of your woodwinds, uh, which is not maybe something you would like to have all the time. Sometimes you might want to have more control, but for maybe big sections like this or if you just like to have like a backing orchestra to, uh, to some of your music, uh, it's really, really effective and really realistic, like I said. So let's move on to the brasses now. I got them divided by low, medium and high and they're all playing long notes. So let's listen to all three of them. So as you can see, I played a little bit with uh, with the volume here. I think I played as well. Yeah, I played quite a lot with the modulation wheel. That's for the the higher notes. And I would say the brasses in Albin One, um, especially the higher brasses like the trumpet, can sound a bit unrealistic if not treated properly. So you really have to dial in the volume uh, the right amount. Like easily, if I, if I would have let that a couple dB higher. Uh, then it would just feel like the trumpet are in the front of the stage. But in a concert hall, they're basically behind the whole orchestra because they play so loud, so we, they don't have to be in the front. So you kind of have to think about that while you uh, incorporate the brass section into the, your string parts. Now let's look at the percussions, which is really, really good. Um, the low percussions I uh, use are the Dowron Percussion Ensemble. This one's a little bit more dark, and so I wanted another set of perks that I would hire Timber to uh, to incorporate as well and to blend in. So for this, I used uh, also in the percussions I used the uh, hyper toms. So for this last pad, I used, uh, that's from the, I think, Stephenson's theme band. And in here, you got tons of different synths um, that have quite a lot, quite a wide variety of effects. I think I, I took off most of the effect for this because I just wanted a very basic pad. But, um, but uh, definitely a lot of things here, interesting things, uh, interesting sound that you can add it to, to your soundtrack. Looks like they really wanted to make an 
all-in-one package for doing orchestral writing and doing orchestral soundtracks, which nowadays big movie soundtrack are basically uh, a combinations of uh, real instruments and uh, digital instruments. And the two other sounds I used uh, for this soundtrack are a piano. I know that's, that that Albin one has a piano, and uh, but I I just prefer this this one for what I wanted to to do. Uh, Alicia Keys, that's just a piano that I've had for 15 years and it sounds pretty okay. I used a ton of, of uh, compression on it. Uh, you'll see uh, uh, right after that, uh, just just to make the attack come out as much as possible. So it can cut through the orchestra. Let's have a listen. So, I mean, it doesn't sound great, but with the orchestra, it does. You can really hear the attack, but you're not... The, the, the rest of the, the soundtrack is not disturbed by uh, the resonance of the instrument. So, I didn't have to push it so hard. I just had to compress a lot of it. And so, the, trend, the, the initial transient comes, comes in. And lastly, I used... Uh, Choir, digi digital choir. This one's from Razer, also uh, a synth that I've been using for a long time. I would have loved a real choir, but um, the fact that this is kind of a fantasy sci-fi uh, story I thought it it brought a nice touch like to to have something surreal uh, behind uh, that would uh, surround the whole orchestra and lastly I can show you on the on the master bus here I just have a limiter uh, so I'm basically I'm just boosting the volume a little bit um, so it's it's audible um, but yeah no compression no EQing at all. Uh, no extra reverb. What you hear is all out of the software. So this is what you hear now. I think for the for the soundtrack, I initially did some like a little bit of compression, but almost nothing, and maybe a little saturation to uh, to add some excitement to the to the mix. But otherwise, this is it. It was a pretty simple production uh, to do, uh, just because I've been using this one software for pretty much everything and uh, I could do a wide variety of uh, articulations and effects. So yeah, we could say that I was pretty happy with, uh, with the result. So there you have it. I think it's a great software. I think they put a lot of work into it uh, so that it sounds as natural as possible. Even if you have like all strings together, all woodwinds together and all brasses together, uh, they kind of managed to create something interesting that you can use pretty much everywhere. But the downside to that is that you don't have as much flexibility. You don't have access to like a solo violin if you want, or just a solo horn. You're really using this like if you want just a string sections uh, or just a brass section. So that's the downside maybe to it. Uh, but they didn't make it for that. They really make it for, for you to have like an orchestra at the tip of your finger ready to go, all mixed uh, with a great reverb, all beautifully recorded. Um, so yeah, I don't know if you're looking to buy the Sound Factory, but if you're looking to create a big sound and you're looking to have a big orchestra and some great percussions and some amazing uh, also electronics for sound design, well, this is a good investment, I would say. So maybe what other genre are you looking to use it with? I sure would use it like some power metal. Like I could put a drum on this and some guitars and it would just sound pretty cool. I might do eventually a video on that. And if you already bought it, well, feel free to leave a comment down here on how you've been using it and your general experience with it. I'd be curious to know how you feel about the software. Don't forget to follow my channel for all composition and orchestration related content, and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you, bye-bye.